Hey there, Ryan with you again, and today we're going to talk about shooting objects in the night sky, specifically the stars and the moon. The first thing you'll need is a sturdy tripod like I have my camera mounted to here. Stars are very faint, so a long exposure is required to capture them properly, making hand-holding an impossibility. The moon is quite bright, but also very far away and requiring a telephoto lens which needs to be absolutely stable. Secondly, a rural area is key for shooting the stars. Urban areas tend to obscure the night sky because of the light pollution. Your camera can't see through all that pollution any better than your eyes can, so get away from the big cities for your best chance. If your family does a yearly camping or cottage trip, that's the perfect opportunity to experiment with photographing the night sky. Lay the kids down to sleep and then spend a few hours getting some great shots. Thirdly, you'll need a lot of patience and a camera capable of manual exposures. The photo that you see here on the screen was a 30 second exposure, which is about the shortest amount of time you can get away with to capture the stars. Anything less and they'll be quite faint. Exposure times of many minutes or even hours are not uncommon when photographing stars. Had I left the camera on any of its automatic or program modes, it would have likely chosen a wildly inaccurate exposure. It can also be useful to have some sort of frame of reference in your photo like the horizon, trees, buildings, or other objects which will provide a sense of scale and allow people to more easily identify what they're looking at. A lake or a body of water also works really well as you'll see the reflection of the stars. You'll also need to set your camera to a high ISO such as ISO 1600 or 3200 to let the maximum amount of light into the camera. The night sky is dark so your camera needs all the help it can get. If you leave your shutter open for a longer period to let more light in, you'll also start to see the stars move in your photo, looking like curved lines as the Earth spins through the galaxy. This type of photo has a way bigger wow factor, but takes a lot longer. The photo here took an astounding two and a half hours. Now, as for the moon, it's tricky in its own way. These tips work best if the moon is high in the sky, late at night. A full moon is best for the maximum visual impacts, and you'll want a camera that has a zoom of at least 300 millimeters for the moon to look large enough in your photos. This is where super zoom compact cameras can actually excel compared to a DSLR, as many of the lenses on super zooms go all the way up to the 600 to 800 millimeter range. Replicating that same focal length on a DSLR would cost tens of thousands of dollars. And because the moon is very bright, much brighter than you might think, you don't need to use a high ISO setting that a DSLR would excel at. You can leave your camera on a low ISO setting like 1 or 200 and set your aperture to something mid-range like f8 or f11. You can set your shutter speed to something equal to your ISO. So if your ISO is 200, set your shutter speed to 1 250th of a second as a starting point and experiment as necessary. Just like photographing stars, leaving your camera on an all automatic setting can likely result in a very poor exposure as it gets very confused between the bright moon versus the dark sky. Now the one downside to these specific settings is that they're only good for moon close-ups. If you try to capture a wider scene with these settings, the rest of the scene will be vastly underexposed. The only way around this is to catch the moon earlier in the evening when the sky is a little bit brighter so the moon's brightness won't be overpowering. That way you can use one exposure setting that will capture the entire scene properly. Have fun shooting the night sky and be sure to share your results with us on our Facebook wall. Thanks for watching and check back at blacks.ca for new videos.